Hey, everybody, and everybody's still in Twitch chat. I always feel weird starting a recording when Twitch chat has, like, been here. <laughs> and you guys are just like, oh, hey, it's more Colby. Um, we're going to do another unconventional style uh, lesson today. Instead of our typical, let's go ahead and mute desktop audio in case people are pinging us on the uh, lead client. So instead of the traditional, we'll go through one of our gameplays of today uh, and just microanalyze, use our draw on the screen tool to like mark up all the ways we could have played different, you know, draw little arrows. Okay, I should have been rotating this way or hey, look at these like lines that I could have played around the minions to like block certain skill shots or to zone with certain skill shots. Instead of that, we're going to just review a concept today. And we're going to talk about it. It actually did come up in one of our games. Uh, we found out we actually had a couple who was playing as ADC and support. And I thought that was super sweet. That's like, that's what you want to see, man. That's great. Uh, they weren't Zion and Rakan, but they were playing AD and bot. And that's, that's adorable. Um, and it even was the woman was AD. So it was like perfect. They were Zion and Rakan playing League of Legends. <laughs> um, and what we did today, instead of... Again, our typical just going in and playing ranked, 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 and trying to grind up on our journey all the way up to Diamond one day. Um, we just uh, bought two new champions that we hadn't played today. One of them that we intentionally were not playing for the several years we had been <laughs> we had been a League of Legends player. Teemo, we embraced that dark side. We got Teemo, and we played Teemo. And it's that was good. I, it wasn't like the best, most successful games. I didn't like super carry on Teemo, but it was good to like learn his kit a little bit more intuitively by playing it and experiencing like, okay, these are problems he has in the early game. These are problems he has once he hits six. This is how realistic it is to like try and throw your ult out constantly when you have six. This is like the level of minefield I can produce. So it's probably the best others can produce as well, or at least in that ballpark. So I shouldn't be as afraid when ganking after six if it was immediately after. If he's been split pushing for a while, okay, maybe I'd be a little bit more cautious. Um, things like that. And then we also bought ourselves Hecarim. Hecarim, he's been strong in the past few patches, very meta jungler. And it's about time, we, we used to be a jungle main before and we didn't own Hecarim when he was like the meta jungler, along with like Elise and Ivern, you know? So it's nice to get him. It's nice to play a few games of him, feel his kit, see the power. He feels very well-rounded, and I think, uh, um, you know, maybe not immediately, but with a little bit more practice, we could definitely be bringing him out in ranked. And the important lesson today, and the situation I'm actually going to use as an example from ranked, um, the uh, couple I was playing, the uh, one of the couple, the one who was ADC, doesn't play bot. She just doesn't. And we, we wound up not winning that game. And I don't even honestly think it was really because of bot lane, like the AD and support together. I think there were other lanes that were the problem. And I think also I just wasn't doing enough of my job as a jungler because I was on Hecarim. So like half of my attention was like, okay, now when should I E? When should I save mana? <laughs> so I wasn't, I wasn't giving us enough control over the map with vision and like objective control. Um, but I was seeing her take it kind of hard. At least what I was interpreting from what she was saying in chat. She was like, oh, I'm sorry. Whenever you see somebody apologize in chat, you know, like, when they're talking at their desk, not typing in chat, just saying to themselves, they're like, oh, man, I got hit by Q there. I shouldn't have fucking got hit by that Q. And here's the jungler. Now I'm dead. There's no, oh, my God, I'm so bad. And then they say in chat, sorry, my bad, or something like that, you know? And it's very easy I'm going to bring it back to me because I don't want this to be all about me inferring something about another person. When I do this stream and I spend, you know, at the start we were spending like two hours analyzing. We've, we've tried to scale it down to about a half hour lesson size because that's a little bit more uh, realistic, I think. <laughs> um, we want to be very hypercritical of ourselves. We want to know every way that we made an error, whether it was trying to go back into fog of war when we weren't last hitting, whether it was rotating around the map, whether it was, hey, we missed that fucking last hit and it was a cannon. Come on, don't miss cannons, come on. Whatever it was, we want to be very hypercritical of ourselves because it's important for us to be aware of what all of our shortcomings are. 
In every lesson, there is something that was the most prevalent or most recurring problem that we had, and that becomes the theme of that lesson. And that's what we focus on in the next day that we play. We try and keep that lesson in mind. We try and think about if it was last hitting. Okay, let's be sure. Let's focus extra hard in our drill at the start of today. And let's really try and improve on our last hitting. And when we're in lane, sure, maybe we won't trade as effectively. But let's make sure and secure all those last hits. Let's try and rotate around the map to where the farms are building up. So by the end of the game, we have a decent CS score. Let's try and do that. And when we do that, it helps. But in the course of doing that, we have to go through those hypercritical sessions where we put a magnifying glass on, over our own play and really critique ourselves. And it can be tough, you know? We're not the best players out there. Certainly, I'm not the best player out there. I'll say that. <laughs> and oftentimes in my games, there are some times in the past where I felt like, man, what could I have done in this game? You know, everybody's felt that way at one point or another. But the thing to think about is we're not faker, right? If we were faker, any one of the games we were playing in, we could have carried. I don't care if we were support. I don't care if we were tank, top, or jungle. And I don't care what the other score lines were for our allies. If we were faker, we could fucking carry that game. The reason we couldn't carry that game is because we're not faker. And that means we have a long way to go. We have a lot of mistakes we make constantly that make us not faker. And we need to improve that. If we want to actually get better at the game, if we want to improve our skill, we've got to analyze ourselves, identify those problems, practice at resolving those problems and compensating for those shortcomings, and then eventually aspire to reach the play level of Faker. Now in doing that again though, you hear how much criticism of ourselves we're having, even just in theory. We're not even listing specific examples right now. And it's important to remember that as we're hypercritical, that we don't let ourselves actually get down on ourselves. Because we're fucking not faker, man. We're whoever, you know, me, I'm just, I'm only playing four days a week. Faker plays every day for like over 12 hours. He kills it at League because he puts in that amount of time. And he plays with the best people in the world. He plays on challenge, at the challenger tier in Korea. Like, of course he's better than us. Of course he is. There's no way we could expect ourselves to match that. Not if we, like, aren't matching that level of dedication and that level of effort and that level of practice. Now, we can aspire to that. There's some things we can't easily change, like being on the Korean server. But there are some things we can change, like our rank in North America. If you're also in North America. <laughs> if not, the magic of Twitch has made us reach beyond our boundaries, which is amazing. But nonetheless, wherever you are, you can always climb up higher on the ladder unless you're literally rank one. And even then you can get further LP. You know, there is no ceiling in League. So you can always try and improve. And it's important to recognize that you're not, it's not that, oh, I'm not as good as the current highest ranked person in the world right now, or even in my region, or I'm not at the top of my bracket, I'm only gold four or gold five, I'm not gold one right now, bleh, that feels so bad. It's important to like feel good about the progress you've made. Like last year, and I've been playing League for a few years, and I've never been gold because I never like sat down and played the game like seriously until like the end of the season, and I would consistently grind up to silver one. So I never was gold. I never broke into gold. And it's not even before mid-season, the MSI. We were already gold. We've been gold for a while now. That's great. That feels wonderful. That feels great. And we're on our way to diamond. We still have a long way to go. Every game we play, there's tons of mistakes we make, and there's tons of room for analysis and improvement. But we don't let ourselves get down on that. We don't feel discouraged. We don't, you know, let ourselves get in our own head. We don't tilt ourselves. <laughs> and it's important to keep that in mind. Because when you're playing... Again, I make these lessons not just for my own self-reflection. It really helps to analyze myself. But I also make this to create a catalog for you guys. So when you're at these similar ranks, you can see the struggles I was having and maybe relate to them and learn something by watching me sort of critique myself. One of the struggles you can encounter easily when you're grinding, whether it's any rank, gold 5, gold 4, silver anything, diamond anything, is getting down on yourself like that. And man, I love that wallpaper. That's the original 
concept art for Annie. God, she was so badass when she was like teenager style Annie. Anyways, sorry, I'm getting distracted by my own fucking wallpapers. <laughs> um, we we got to make sure that we stay positive, right? And today, instead of just playing rank, 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 rank for several hours, trying to grind back up, like, oh, I felt so bad to lose gold four and get demoted to gold five. Let's get back to gold four. Let's just do that super hard. And we did one day, and then we immediately dropped back down to gold five. Oh, that sucks. Let's get back to gold four. What we did today was we didn't play any ranked. We bought two champions we've never played before, and we just played a bunch of norms all day. We didn't even drill. We didn't even drill because we just bought our champions. We took Timo. We took in, into the uh, um, the training mode so we could just figure out his kit a little bit better because I had some questions about like how that poison dot ticks and stuff about that. But aside from that, we just played norms all day, and that's great. You know what happened? I had fun. I had a lot of fun playing. There was nothing on the line. It was just fun. I got to try new champions. I got to laugh at obvious mistakes when I died, when clearly I shouldn't have, knowing now. Like, oh, that's what happens when I do that. Well, okay, I'll never do that again. It's nice to have those moments, you know? And you can only have those moments when you're not being hypercritical of yourself. And it's important to give yourself a break. And to let yourself be bad. Because we are bad, man. If you're comparing yourself to Faker, I got bad news for you. You're gonna be bad for probably forever. <laughs> so maybe one day Faker will fall off. And you will become like an LCS player. And then it can be a fair fight. But for most of us, we're never gonna be as good as Faker. And it's good to hold ourselves up to an unrealistic expectation. Because that will push us up to what is a realistic expectation. But we can't let ourselves get discouraged by that. We gotta keep, you know, keep our mind balanced, keep our equanimity, right? I, I, in the comments section of every, or the description box for every one of my videos, it's all in the name of equanimity every step of the way. And I mean that. It's about having fun as we try to grind. The grind is not hard, the grind is fun. The grind is an experience. It's about the journey. If we hit diamond and we like stand up and now we're diamond, then I'm still just a guy standing here. <laughs> you know, there's nothing, I haven't like grown twice my height. <laughs> you know, I'm just a guy who's diamond now and that's great. But what is enjoyable is those months preceding that when we climbed our way up to diamond. So you gotta enjoy that. And what goes up and comes down along the way, you gotta enjoy the highs, you also gotta enjoy the lows. And it's hard to enjoy when you're losing or when you have a game where you felt like you could have done better and you just didn't. You gotta find a way to have that peace with yourself and enjoy the losses. Find find the room for improvement and enjoy finding that room for improvement. Take some fun out of that. So I think that was important to emphasize today because both, you know, it was thematically appropriate given that we were doing a day of just fun norms with champions we'd never played before. And particularly when I saw the other person in chat having a bad time. Hopefully, you know, this is something that uh, can help everybody have a little bit more fun on the game. Even when we're being our try-hard selves, you know. We, we gotta have fun. We play this game, we try hard at League specifically, for a reason. And it's because this game is awesome, man. This game is fun. I love this game. There's so much strategy and thought. And when I first pick up a champion, or when I play a role that I'm not used to playing, I get crushed. Because this game is hard. <laughs> There's a lot of skill in this game. And like, and just making it to gold puts you in like the 80th percentile in North America or the world. I think it's the world actually, or the way the op.gg counts your rating. But like, regardless, that's insane. Like everybody who's watching this and is gold, like congratulations, you're in the 80th percentile in the world or at least in your region. That's great. You should feel wonderful about that. Don't feel bad about, oh, I lost a game amongst some of the top 20th percentile people in the world. Yeah, you're going to lose games occasionally, and that doesn't mean anything bad about you. So I hope everybody remembers to just take it easy, have fun, enjoy playing League, and, you know, open up this client. Open up this client right now, hop in a game, play a role you're not used to, play a champion you're not used to, do a build you're not used to, Try like a, a concept that you're not used to. Like maybe you play a lot of Zed, but you always go for kills. Try split push Zed. Try something. Try something new. Do something different and fail and feel how you fail. 
feel feel the suffering of that horrible loss where you got crushed because you had no idea what the fuck you were doing and then learn from that and then do it again and next time you'll have a little bit better idea of what you're doing and then eventually you'll start to nail it and then you have a whole other style in your kit it's like a pocket pick but a play style or a role or a champion whatever it is that you can work on and expand on go out there right now and lose and then get better I challenge you, and I know you guys can do it, because I do it every day, and I'm not I'm not special. I'm just some dude. <laughs> I'm just some dude on Twitch you guys probably found because we played together, you know? So, that's the lesson for today. A little lighthearted one. Um, uh, I'll try and still find some fun clips, uh, highlights uh, from today to upload for you guys, but that's a nice lesson. Short, sweet, to the point. Uh, anybody in Twitch who has questions or wants to hang out for a little bit... Uh, you know, let's chat. Uh, maybe we could do one more game uh, before we close it out if anybody wants to duo or do a norms or something. But uh, that's it for the lesson. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this was helpful to you. If you know anyone who is tilted as hell and like being a tryhard, send them this video. Hopefully this will help them out because we all love this game. We're all here to have fun with this game. We all love this the community this game creates around it. And we should enjoy being a part of that community. So that's it for today. Show's over. Thanks for watching, everybody.